All right, so here is a GI question. The chart given to us is a bar graph, and we have these three bars with every single label on the x-axis. Let's try to understand what all of this is, these values, the legend, as we read the text here. The graph provides data for all performances of four plays during a recent one-week period. So I do see the plays mentioned here, and it's about all performances of these plays. So say play one was performed two times, then this data is about both of those performances. That is what it is. Let's read further. For each play, the graph shows total number of tickets sold for all performances. And where do I see that? I see that here, tickets sold, and this value is in hundreds, okay? So if I try to read this for play one, then this is here at 65, which means that 6,500 tickets in total were sold for all of the performances of play one. Similarly, we can read it for play two, three, five. Let's read further. That's one thing given. Then it also gives the capacity. What is this capacity? It is the maximum number of tickets that could have been sold for all the performances. Okay. And where do I see that on the graph? I see it here, the black bars. So let me also number these accordingly. One was tickets sold. This is the capacity again in hundreds. So again, if I read this for play one, then 80 in hundreds means 8,000 was the total number of tickets that could have been sold, but actually the number that did get sold was 6,500. Okay, so it's natural to have this actual number less than the capacity or at most equal to the capacity. That's why you always see the blue bars here lower. They never can cross it, but of course they could have been equal, which never happened for these plays. Then this is the second thing. Um, and it also gives us this third thing, which is the average price of each ticket sold. And that is the third thing that I see here in these pink bars. So average ticket price, this is something measured in US dollars. If I look at it for play one, then this is 90 US dollars. Okay, so on an average, every single ticket that was sold was $90 for play one and so on for the other place. That's it then. There were these three things that we had. We saw all of them mentioned on the legend here. An interesting part is that all of them come with their own units, while the first two are both in hundreds. The third one is US dollars. So straight away going from numbers to dollars. Okay. So that's it. We really understand this thoroughly. And all of this, remember, is for a recent one week period. Let's now see what is asked. All right. So here's a statement where I see two blanks and we have these two drop down menus. We just have to choose the correct choice for each blank. So we'll just read this properly. It says as a percent of capacity, the number of tickets sold was greatest for play dash. OK, so once I find this play, then what's happening for this place, the same play I need for this play, then I'm talking about revenue also. So we'll think about that later. First, let's try to understand this part. What is it that I want? Okay, so here I've just isolated it. Understand, as a percent of capacity, the number of tickets. So we are talking about basically the number of tickets sold as a percentage of capacity. It's just written in an opposite way. It can confuse, but it's still number of tickets sold out of the total capacity. And since we're talking about a percentage, we will multiply this fraction by 100. So this is the percentage we're talking about. The percentage that number of tickets sold forms out of the total capacity. This percentage was greatest for which place. So that's our goal here. Now, because these are both things that we have on the graph, we can simply go and read what the values are. You can read the heights of the blue bars, the black bars, and then compute that ratio, multiply by 100. So calculations here are pretty straightforward. So some of you might want to solve it using the numbers. But what I'm going to do is I will first explain this to you through visual estimation, how you can do it without any calculations. Then I'll also show it to you using all of that data and calculations. Okay, so let me first show you what you would do, how you can just decide this based on visualization. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. 
So see how we're going to do this. You have your blue bars for the total number of tickets sold and you have black bars for the capacity. Now at this point, if I want to see what proportion of the black bar is the blue bar, I can see that you are really saying what part of this black section is covered by the blue section. How high does the blue section get? Suppose I have another blue bar here. Just compare both of them for the same black bar. Now tell me which out of these two blue bars, let's, let's number them one and two, which between one and two holds a greater proportion of the black bar you should be able to tell that it is the second blue bar why because this you see covers most of the black section it's like about 80 percent 80 85 percent of the black bar is covered here in this blue one well this is about half of the black bar only so essentially you can compare this by simply looking at the coverage that you have how much of the black bar is covered by the blue bar wherever you see the greatest coverage of black by blue that is where I should have the greatest proportion and hence the greatest percentage that I want to find. So let's see how I can use this here on my graph. Here we are. Now, simply look at the coverage. Here I see that this blue part comes to a substantial height here. It covers the black bar till here. When I compare it with plate two, just compare two plates at a time, compare these two and see if you can figure out where is it that blue has a better coverage. Obviously, plate one is where it has a better coverage. Here, the blue bar is reaching to just about half of the height of the black bar, but this is above the half of the height. So therefore, if I want the great test, plate two is definitely not the one. Plate three, in fact, has a poor or coverage compared to even plate 2. This is not even reaching half of the black height. So this is also not the greatest. Then when I look at plate 4, this is interesting because I see the blue bar has covered almost the entire black bar. There's just a very little part left. So three-fourths of the height of the black bar is covered by blue. So sheer visualization can help me tell that the greatest proportion that blue holds of black is here for plate 4. And that is how I can come and already mark the answer for or the first plank as play four. But still, I'm going to show this to you through calculations as well. Before that, though, observe one thing. I'd just like to draw your attention to a thing here that these bars all start from the 30 mark. These are not the complete heights of the bar. So although through visualization, I could still talk about coverage, I will not be able to simply read this and give the percentage. What that means is if I really extend it here till the zero point, look here, then coverage wise, it's still the same. If I am covering black by blue, I still see that blue reaches substantial height. And when I do the same thing for play four, I will still be able to see that in play four, even now the blue coverage out of black is more heavy compared to what it was in play one. So visually to see where coverage is more or less, that is enough, even with this little distinction of where the bars are starting. But you have to be careful that you don't just read your values this way. For example, if you simply read plate two from here and you say that, okay, this is coming to half of the height. So 50% is the proportion of blue out of black. You would be wrong. Why? Because 50% deciding visually misses the point that there are 30 below these bars as well, below what you really see. In that case, you will have to take the values. This is 60. This is 90. So if you really calculate the proportion, it's actually 75% not 50% as it seems here. So you have to be very careful that the same information that you have, the same data set that you have will be used differently for different purposes. It worked in this question that visualization alone gave us the answer. But in another, if they really asked for the percentage, do not just use visualization to answer. Be careful about what the values are. And in those cases, calculation is your way to go. Now, let me also show you the other method where I would compare them using just calculations, not any visualization. So I'll just put this aside. Okay, now for the purpose of calculation, I'm simply going to write the ratios in each case. It's 65 by 80 here, I'm not putting the multiplication by 100. I have 60 by 90 here, then this is 55 by 90. And then finally, the last one that I have here, this is 45 by 50. And I want to compare these ratios, see where it's the biggest. Now, again, you can see how 60 by 90, relatively simple to compare. But let's just compare these two because they have the same denominator. I can see that with the same denominator, 60 is a greater numerator. So if I compare these two fractions, play two is the bigger one. So play three is out since I'm looking for the greatest. Now, when I look at play one and play two, I can see that play one has a bigger numerator and a smaller denominator 
denominator both of which result in making a fraction greater than another so play 2 loses here in front of play 1 finally we just need to compare plays 1 and 4 to see which out of these two is the greatest you can use your calculator to put this in or you can do basic estimation this is 45 by 50 which is 9 by 10.9 very easy to find this one here if you try to estimate cancel it by 5 that's going to be 13 by 16 and then again you can estimate that it's close to 12 by 16 but definitely actually more than that then you cancel by 4 so it's 0.75 slightly more than 0.75 and clearly between these two values then 0.9 is the greater one so still I got the same answer both of these methods are open for you do what you are comfortable with at this point let me ask you this could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented such is the power of the process of owning the data set and because this skill may not come naturally to many of you we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz thus Throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Now, once I found play 4, I needed to know the total revenue for play 4, right? So how am I getting total revenue? That's straightforward. Total revenue is simply going to be this average ticket price multiplied by the tickets sold. So let's just write down our approach first. Total revenue average price of one ticket right so if i have the price of one ticket and i simply multiply it by number of tickets i will have my answer so i'm going to read this value from the chart and here we are let's only focus on play four so average price per ticket i'm going to read this pink bar when you see the height it's here at 40 and remember the unit we had it is in us dollars so the first value that i have here is 40 dollars and then multiply that by the number of tickets which is again the blue bar so this is 45 so is it 45 tickets no take care of the units it's 4500 tickets when you simply do this multiplication you will get 180,000 this was a really straightforward part so then I mark my first choice and I'm done let's summarize this nicely so we began by carefully understanding everything that was given to us all of these things talked about plays and performances and all of the three things that we were measuring for those plays we kept looking at this information in the text and then matched it with what we had in the chart as well then and the first part of the statement was pretty interesting where we were trying to maximize this proportion and we did this two ways one was through visualization for which we really first developed an approach of what is it that we want to see how coverage is going to help us decide in that we could see that play 4 has the maximum coverage here we saw that it is immaterial that this is starting from the 30 mark even then we can see the coverage remains the same because anyway the part below 30 remains covered another way we saw the same part was through actual calculations since these were pretty straight forward as well we compared place 2 and 3 to easily reject 3 then between 1 and 2 2 was easily rejected it really came down to only 1 and 4 for which we just had to do some minimal estimation for play 1 so overall owning the data set deciding what your approach is going to be before you jump into data and just getting the values you want that's it